Time to play with some clay. I'm just getting ready to uh, edit some video from today. And I wanted to stop and uh, ask you to do something. Like, subscribe, click the bell, and make a comment in my videos. And check out my instructional DVDs, which are linked below this uh, video. All right, let's get on with today's video. Well, I thought I was recording, but I guess I wasn't. Sometimes, the, you know, the voice command on these two cameras, I say uh, start recording and, you know, with the word GoPro at the beginning of it. And it doesn't quite do it and for some reason. And so sometimes I just don't. So anyway, this is uh, the helmet started. And... Uh, I'm doing it out of this uh, monster clay because uh, I think it's going to work out fine that way. I'm going to run this through the pasta machine to make a strap that goes down and over and down through the uh, middle of the uh, face mask. And uh, I'll put a video here showing how I use a pasta machine. Um, I've got my uh, monster clay underneath my uh, swing arm lamp and I'm softening it up so that I can put it through my pasta machine. I'll show you that process. This is my pasta machine. You uh, put the crank in and uh, you got two rollers that turn and you put your clay through there to give it a flat surface. You can adjust the, the uh, space between the rollers with this little knob on the side by pulling it out and adjusting it till you got it to where you like it. These are the rollers uh, that you uh, put the uh, clay through, the flattened clay. Um, these are for wide uh, noodles and this is for the uh, spaghetti noodles. I use this for the fringe. And all you do is just take uh, the handle out and put it back into the uh, thing and you roll the, uh, the roller. And it comes out the bottom. I'll show you all that uh, once I get the uh, uh, monster clay ready to go for this uh, demonstration. I'm using monster clay instead of my normal J-Mac clay. And uh, it's because... I'm making fringe and I want the uh, the structure of the monster clay for the fringe because it holds its shape. So when you got the clay, the monster clay or the J-Mac clay, just warm and just malleable. That's the uh, stage you want the uh, clay in to uh, put through the rollers. You don't want to put the clay through the rollers when it's uh, too soft because it'll stick to the rollers. And then I'm just gonna roll out a little bit. This makes it easier for it to go through the uh, rollers. Oh, and uh, then you just uh, line up your clay with the narrow end of the uh, tube at the bottom where the rollers meet. Then you hold it while you slowly, if you go fast, it'll make little bubbles. And then the uh, clay comes out the bottom part of the uh, rollers in a flat uh, form. Set to the thickness you wanted. All right, now you got the uh, clay flattened out and you put the, uh, the handle in the proper hole and uh, then you just hold it up there over the uh, rollers and it just takes it right in. And you have to guide it through because if you don't, it'll drift off to the side and give you some bad karma. <laughs> now the clay comes out the other side like little fringes. Now 
Then you lay it out on something to hold it until you're ready to use it. And in this case, I'm using a piece of foam. All right, that's the uh, process for making fringe. Lovely little machine that you can get at any uh, bakery shop or where they sell cooking supplies. It's, it's wonderful. I, I remember once I was using this in a, a gallery in Palm uh, Desert in California. And I was making uh, flat clay for uh, something, I can't remember what it was. And a group of uh, tourists from Italy came in and saw me using a pasta machine for clay. And they stood there laughing. I didn't understand a thing they said, but one of them kind of indicated that they make these over where they live. And I said, I know. <laughs> All right, that's how to use a pasta machine. All right, I got the basics of the uh, frame of the uh, helmet started. And it's just a matter of centering it and everything like that. And I'll do that when I get to the point where I want to fill that in with clay. And uh, But I'm going to put this aside for now. I'm going to not have it so you can take it on and off. And only because uh, the hair yeah, that I put on him will affect how it sits on his head. And so rather than do that, I'm just going to keep the helmet off to the side and let it cool off. I don't want it to distort. Let me tell you, this is hard to do. But I think it worked out okay. It's not perfect. But it's as good as I'm going to get it. And when I fill this in with clay over here, and uh, when I do finally fill this in with clay... It'll solidify the uh, the whole thing. And then I can add the uh, rivets uh, around the thing and also do some adjusting on the uh, monster clay itself. All right. Now to get back to work on this. A lot that I'm going to do now is... Uh, Pretty much stuff that I cover on my uh, instructional DVDs, <clears throat> which somebody asked me uh, in an email today, uh, do I send to Brazil? And I answered him, I send all over the world at no extra cost. Uh, yeah, it's not the wisest business mo model for me to... <laughs> charge the same price with uh, shipping and everything all included uh, for every place in the world because sometimes it can cost me 40, 50 bucks to send something and I just eat that. But that's okay because quite honestly, uh, I'm doing this because I, I want to get people inspired to sculpt and I want to ha have them learn as much as they can from the over 50 years that I've uh, been at this. And so that's what I'm doing when I do that. So if you want to order my DVDs, check the link below and uh, take a look at the uh, review of each one of my DVDs on the link. Uh, it's a video review and uh, decide what you want or if you want them all. I give you that choice. And if you buy them all, all nine DVDs, uh, then you make, you get quite a bit of savings on that in the long run. All right, I'm going to start the neck and, uh, and the shoulders. And, uh, well, first I got to finish these uh, ribs. I try to do the ribs on each side uniformly. In other words, I don't do all of them on one side and then all of them on the other side. I do it 
both sides as I go down. That way I don't make any mistakes, hopefully. And the ribs come out together, hopefully. Looks like I got two more ribs to go, yeah. They're pretty well melded into the, uh... Let's see, I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The last two ribs are sort of melded into the uh, seventh rib. That makes it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That makes a nine, a total of nine ribs. I hope there's no doctor watching me. As with a lot of old people, they're the discs between the uh, back backbone vertebrae become less. Well, let's see. I'm trying to think. Less in volume, so that the uh, they shorten up a little bit and they. Their rib cage becomes lower and closer to the hips in some cases. And that's what's happening with this. All right, that's going to be it for today. Um, my alarm went off. I've got to uh, get moving. Uh, i got uh, an, uh, some people to meet. And uh, I need to get out of here. I know all I did was the helmet, but uh, I think that's pretty good. I, I'm kind of liking it. I put a piece of clay in the center to hold the uh, helmet shape up. It was starting to sag because of the softness of the uh, monster clay. And uh, I might, the night before I work on this uh, helmet, stick it in the freezer just to Harden up the uh, monster clay even harder, and then, then I can put my clay inside of it and shape it. All right, till till next time. Good night, everybody. Give me a thumbs up and share my video, and then check out my instructional DVDs. Uh, the link down below this video. All right. See you next time.